Welcome to this video. In this video we're going to present some tips on the problem, purpose, statement and questions. And this video is part of our series on research conceptualization. So there are a couple of things that I wanted to emphasize here. And the first one is that um, I would suggest that you write your problem purpose statement as soon as you can, even if you don't feel ready. So don't wait until you've read all that you want to read or that you've made all the decisions you need to make. Start getting things down on paper. You'll find it's much easier to make those decisions when you've written them down. You don't have to show your problem purpose statement to anyone until you, you are ready. So this is for you. It's a process for you to get all those thoughts in your head down onto paper. And then once they're on paper, it's easier to start making decisions. Keep the problem purpose statement to one page length. It's very tempting to let it roll over into one and a half or two pages, but really you only want the essence on this one page. You want the core of your research on this one page so that you can see that there are no contradictions and that everything's aligned. So rewrite it until it stays, until it's only one page. Keep all your drafts of the problem purpose statement because you might find that going back to an earlier version has there's some clarity maybe in a question or in how you've articulated the knowledge gap or you may find that um, you know your thesis has changed over time and you'll be able to see that and you'll also begin to see progress at times when it feels like there is no progress. Read your problem purpose statement aloud to yourself. In reading it you'll begin to hear inconsistencies and problems with logic. It's a very useful technique and um, a very simple one that you can do on your own. Now your department or discipline may require a different format for research conceptualization. So what I would suggest then is that you use the format that I've given you as a thinking tool to help you conceptualize before you write and then move it into the required format. So it will help you conceptualize your research and then you can fit it into the format that you need. If you are, if you are developing a hypothesis, then do so after the research questions. This will just help you clarify your thinking before you develop the hypothesis. It's a good idea to include the problem purpose statement in the introduction chapter of a thesis or a paper. In a thesis or a research proposal, you really want it to be within the first three pages. And this is because you then offset the questions from your reader about what is the purpose of this research, what, what is the problem, what is the so what. So if you write a research paper from your thesis data, then write a new problem purpose statement for the article that you are proposing. And this is because you may only be taking aspects of your thesis for the paper and the purpose might have changed. So if you recreate the problem purpose statement, you'll be much focused around a paper. If you're writing a, a dissertation, then you may want to write a PPS and Q for the overall thesis and then one for each chapter. Now there will obviously be some repetition but it will help you to work out the focus of each chapter and the purpose of each chapter. And it will get, give you a coherence over the thesis as a whole. If you find you are stuck at any point with your writing, the first thing you need to do is go back to this problem purpose statement and it will help you find a way forward. And you are probably stuck because there is some cognitive or complex mismatch between the components of your thesis and, and the problem purpose statement will help you work out what that is. So 
So once you've got the problem purpose statement, you can begin to build the sections of a proposal or a thesis. So the, once you have the problem, you can build the background to the problem and the discussion of the problem, which will become the introduction chapter or section of a paper. Once you have the knowledge gap and the conceptual framework, you can build it into the literature review. You can expand the purpose statement into the research design and, and begin discussing the methods and methodology. Once you have your research questions, you can begin thinking about what kind of data you'll need to address those research questions, and this will also build into your methodology. And if it's relevant for your research, you can work out your argument from the problem purpose statement, and this is where you take a stand on the research problem. And once you have an argument, you can then unpack any assumptions you may have around this argument and think about counter arguments. So the PPS and Q is very useful for getting feedback and here I'm talking about feedback before you give it to your supervisor, advisor or committee. I'm thinking here about a colleague or a classmate that you can give the problem purpose statement to and then get very specific feedback back and there are two ways to do this. So the first way is to get written feedback and this is where you would give a copy to your colleague or a classmate and you would ask them to follow these instructions. So they need to identify the problem in your problem statement and to actually underline it or mark in the margin where they think it is. And the same for the knowledge gap and, um, and the context. And the reason for this is that while you might think it's very clear it often isn't as clear for a reader. So if your colleague marks something other than the problem that you've identified, then you know you need to rewrite that. So the, the, your colleague doesn't actually have to say anything, they just have to identify the components. And the same for, you know, is there logic and evidence? Is, is there a flow to it? Um, does the purpose statement begin with the purpose of this research is to and does the purpose statement state the purpose of this research is it appropriate does it fit and is it aligned with the rest of the problem purpose statement again they don't have to comment they don't have to say this is good this is bad this is interesting they just have to identify the components does the purpose statement remedy the knowledge gap identify if that is so, are there research questions, are they framed as research questions, and do they unpack the problem. And um, yeah, so mark where this, you know, have a look at the questions, is there a plum pie question, and mark where you think this might appear on the, on the page, on the one page. The second form of feedback is oral feedback and this is where you would read your problem purpose statement aloud to a colleague. Now you can give them a copy if you want because that might make it easier but once you've read it aloud they must articulate back to you the research problem and all the other components. So if they can't tell you what those components are then you know that you need to rework them. So can you see that what I'm suggesting here is that you're getting very specific feedback uh, without somebody having to interpret what you've done. So you're not asking for somebody to tell you whether your work is good or bad, you're just asking them to identify specific components. So what I wanted to cover in this video is that the PPS and Q can be a really valuable tool to a researcher throughout the writing process. From the beginning, from your first thoughts, right up until, until the end when you're just about to submit your thesis or your paper. It helps to keep the thesis or, or the paper, if that's what you're writing, really focused and it keeps the purpose of the research clear. It's so easy to get sidetracked as you do more and more reading and as you collect data and the PPS and Q can keep you on track. And it's also really flexible. 
because if your thesis does change because of the data, then you just rework that problem purpose statement and it helps you to keep coherence throughout the thesis. Keep it somewhere nearby you, stick it up next to your computer so that you can see it at all times and you can constantly say to yourself, what is the purpose of my thesis? What am I trying to do here? Thank you for watching this video where I've tried to outline some tips on the problem purpose statement and this video is part of our series on conceptualizing research.